You need software that helps to create video faster. Let me give you my favorite list. Um, I've segmented this part into four uh, sub points. You need something to do the actual recording or live streaming. I use OBS for that. I'm going to show you what it is in a moment. I use a piece of software that helps me to stream into multiple places at the same time. Some of you might be watching on YouTube, some on Facebook. Um, and uh, then I need some tools to do simple video editing. And I need something to create some graphics. Yeah, these are the four pieces of software that I would like to show you what has worked for me. What doesn't, but this is like the little cheat sheet in advance. So video recording. As I said in the video about the, uh, about the little video space yeah, that I would like you to build. Um, if you missed that, just go back to that video and come back here. We are feeding everything into a computer. We are not just recording it on an SD card. And OBS is an open source software that is free, that is available on all platforms, Mac, Windows, Linux. And it has become the de facto standard for most streamers. Um, and, it, and it's also an exceptionally good tool for recording. Here is what, you, what I'm actually currently seeing here on, on the right hand side on my, on my big monitor. I, uh, you can see that there is a preview of the stream. Yeah, and here are my sources, like this is my iPad, there is the camera. Uh, there is the microphone. Those are all sources. They come together. I see how my my live stream is going. Am I losing any frames um, because my computer is too slow or not? I can see my, my audio level here. And, and I can just start scream, streaming and start the recording. Here you can see that I can just press start recording and it will immediately start to record it on my MacBook. This is my main way to record um, video content these days. So um, it, it just helps me manage different scenes. Um, with scenes I already explained, it's, uh, it's like the ability to switch here between the questions um, and make me slimmer and the screen wider. It helps me to go uh, back again to my slides in one smooth motion without any technical difficulty. And it manages my sources and is recording and my, my, my hub for recording and live streaming. So OBS is, is one of those open source projects where you just, just think it's really hard to beat open source with a commercial product. There are a lot of commercial alternatives like, like XSplit um, and you can check them out. I always keep getting back to the good old OBS in the Mac world, there's actually something that is not half bad. It's called Ecamm Live, but it's Mac only, but it makes live streaming a lot easier. But for example, I was not able to do the split screen view in any reasonable amount of time yeah, in, in Ecamm Live, but I could very easily do this um, here in OBS. So just for you people who are already a bit deeper into it or you come back, those are my actual streaming settings that I use. Um, you can define what kind of quality you want to use. Yeah, you, you have the streaming tab here and you can decide, I want to record in the codec called X264. That is what most people use on YouTube. I record with a constant bit rate at 5,000 kilobytes per second. By the way, I completely ignore the boundaries uh, that, that Facebook is giving. They, they, don't, they seem, don't seem to mind that I'm streaming at a higher resolution than allowed in a format that is not allowed at a higher bit rate that is not allowed. Yeah, so um, those are the settings I'm using right now on a four year old MacBook. Once I get a new machine, I will be able to increase the amount of the bit rate. I would be able to use a faster setting for the CPU usage and if you are on on a Windows laptop, you can also use your graphic card much more efficiently. This is a pure CPU setup. Yeah, so you just want to get the strong CPU for that. So just in case you're wondering, Ben, what kind of stream settings are you using? Those are mine. And I'm using the same settings right now for streaming and recording. If I don't want to stream, I might use 
higher quality settings for recording. In fact, I'm actually doing that. So, and then I was talking about multi-streaming. Um, we are right now streaming it to Facebook and to Google uh, and, to, uh, and to Google YouTube. So I can look at my screen. I see 14 people are currently viewing the, the YouTube stream and I can not see how many people are on Facebook. Um, maybe the team can tell me that would be really interesting to see three, just three people watching on Facebook. Yeah, no problem. Most of the people are watching this later. Yeah. So um, what this tool enables me is to just send out one stream um, to restream.io. And then as you can see here on, the, on, on their website, I can now send it to YouTube, to LinkedIn, to, to Facebook, to a group. And it's absolutely fantastic. It's pretty cheap service uh, for what it does. And again, it allows you to stream simultaneously to different sources, which gives you a broader audience, which I really love. So um, this is how Restream looks once you are actually inside and streaming. You can see a preview of your stream. You can see the quality. By the way, this is the resolution I'm streaming at. I'm streaming at a two by one resolution because um, I want to have two perfect, uh, perfect squares. Yeah, then I can use that later for, uh, for Instagram, for IGTV or all kind of that stuff. I have square slides that are much easier to share. And um, it is a bit of a special format and um, not everybody sees it that way. And if you watch on your phone, your phone is actually a much wider uh, screen than a 16 by nine, which is the standard resolution. Yeah, so I'm, I'm taking advantage of that. So this is what Restream does for me. And it also has a really nice chat feature. It gives me the ability to see the chat from Facebook and YouTube and combine it all into one super chat. And at some point, I will definitely add a little chat here um, in, the, in the stream so you can watch in real time what people are chatting on YouTube and Facebook and in Discord which makes it again a bit more interactive. All right, so that is recording and multi-streaming. What about video editing? Here we divide between two things. We um, like to divide like big edits and big for us is taking a 90 minute video like this and cutting it into 15 minute segments. Um, we use Adobe Premiere for that. You could also use Final Cut, uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve. We primarily use Adobe Premiere um, because our video editor in the team um, is simply most familiar with Adobe products. Yeah, you could use you could use much more simple software for that. Um, for Christ's sake, you can do it on your iPad or in your phone these days. And for small edits, we actually prefer to use the phone. It is so quick and easy to just do some trimming on your phone. Trimming is, is, is when you see like this uh, frame around your video and you can, you can shorten the beginning, you can shorten the end a little bit. And we, we like to use it on the phone or on the MacBook, there is quick time and it's a very easy way to, to do it there. And for us social media folks, uh, it is also important that we are able to, to bring the, the format very easily into what is compatible, for example, on Instagram. Here we can use cut story, for example, um, because our two by one video aspect ratio doesn't work on Instagram really well, or at least on IGTV. So we put some black bars on it. So it's 16 by nine and we can easily cut those segments into 15 segment seconds, uh, 15 second segments. So we are able to publish short one or two minute segments um, onto Instagram stories. Yeah, and cutting 15 seconds, second things is so annoying. And this is why I wanted to show you how it works on, on Cut Story. So first you get the app Cut Story. I don't know if there is an Android equivalent, but this is definitely working on, on iOS. And you import your video here. You just say like, please take this video. And then you can do some small changes like um, 
editing, doing some layout changes, editing music, putting on a sticker. Uh, I mostly just use it to, to, to cut it into 15 uh, minute pieces and this is 15 second pieces and this is what you do here. Here you can see that it has presets for Instagram 15 seconds, Facebook 20 seconds, WhatsApp 30 seconds, IGTV 15 minute segments and it's, it's so fast. Um, in this, I, I just can't believe it. And then it just just squeezes through those parts like this. And in one minute, you have four 15 second segments out of a one minute video. If you try to do this in Adobe Premiere, um, I think it would be like a one hour to two hour task. Yeah, and I, I just don't have time for that uh, in social media. So lightning fast editing, I hope you like this recommendation. If you have a good Android alternative for this, please let me know. I would be very curious. Yeah, let me know in the comments. So that's cut stories. And then as you can see in these slides, we have sometimes we have graphics that we're using, um, like, um, like the little animations or the emojis that we try to put in here. And um, we, we create most of this stuff within our presentation software. Uh, we are currently using Google Slides. I'm also a big fan of Keynote. Um, and if you have to use PowerPoint, uh, we have a guy here in Cologne at Startplatz who is an absolute PowerPoint whiz, always makes me feel like, man, maybe I'm missing out by avoiding PowerPoint so much. But I don't know, I feel I would be sacrificing my pirate soul if I would uh, start using py py uh, PowerPoint again. But that's probably total bullshit. Um, so using a presentation software in order to create your main educational content pieces. Um, that makes it so much easier than actually trying to, to work out designs in InDesign or, um, or Adobe, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, just, just use the presentation software that you know best. And if you need to do some designs, there's a great software called Canva. And Canva is our little secret here in social media. You probably are using Canva. Let me know in the comments uh, how you are working with it. Um, but this is a software that really helped us um, to create our own graphics without too much um, time consumption in the design part. Um, and this is Canva. Yeah, you can look at it. You can see that you have your own designs. Uh, you have already awesome templates like infographics and for all kinds of social media posts. You can upload your own brand stuff. You can sort them in folders. And you can see that we got pretty much for every format, we have uh, our own little template here in, in, in Canva. You can see that uh, this is our video cover. Yeah, the normal 16 by 9 one. This is the LinkedIn event cover, which has a super annoying format. And everything is pixel perfect here. Yeah, those are our two by one article uh, previews. We have some for quotes. And when I wanna change, uh, uh, more or less, let's say Christina, who's sitting over there, is gonna change some quotes. She just copies that slide, changes the text, done deal. Yeah, and, and you don't get that kind of speed anywhere else. Um, but this is a point where I would consider getting some help from a designer. And it's absolutely worth at this point. My designer and my team, my team always says he's not a designer, but what he does is still so much better than what I would do. If you don't use some help of a person who has an eye for design, you will end up thinking that this looks cool. Yeah, so this does not look cool. I thought it looked cool. It was cool in the beginning, but until my wife told me that it looks like a children's birthday card and I realized, fuck, she is so right. It looks like a children's birthday card and not like a professional service. So I'm super glad I invested some time and money with a designer and what the designer did is actually define the colors, the typography, the logo, and the basic templates that I needed. And we uploaded this 
to the brand kit section here, this section. And now when I choose templates, I can just drag and drop those colors and logos in. It goes like that. Yeah, I can define my typography, the sizes and everything here. And it's much, much, much easier. So that is my little software stack that I use to create video content much, much faster. I think the key tool here is OBS Studio and everything else is very, very easily replaceable by other stuff. So I, I hope that was helpful. If you have any recommendations for other software that helps you to work really quick, let me know in the comments.